Hey guys, welcome back to the Conservative Patriot. My name is Keith. What's shaking today, guys? So I did a video a couple days ago uh, trying to figure out whether or not I should change the name. And I have come up with a conclusion for now that I'm going to keep the name the Conservative Patriot because A, I like it, and B, if YouTube doesn't like it, they can kiss my ass. So, um, that's that. Who watched the Democrat debate last night? Raise your, raise your hands. Anybody? Anybody? No. You guys didn't watch it. You made me watch that shit. So, what are my takeaways from the shit show debate last night? It's actually kind of boring. Um, I thought. Not a whole lot has changed from the previous debates. There were still 12 jackasses on stage, each with their own views on how they're going to jack the world up even more and how much they hate Donald Trump. That's pretty much the debate in a nutshell. But if you break it down by candidate, you have Elizabeth Warren out there who is now considered the front runner. God knows how. Um, she's such a, she, she, she just, she doesn't know what she's doing. They all don't know what they're doing. They talk a good game, but they have no real plans. And I think that's what Warren's problem is. She says, I have this plan, I have that plan, I got this, I got that, I got this. And then she doesn't have any answers to how she's gonna pay for anything. And she was questioned many times, especially on her universal health care, on how she's gonna pay for it. Even Pete Buttigieg, you know, it was like, well, you didn't give a yes or no answer, and that was pretty straightforward, so obviously you still don't have an answer, which I thought was, I thought was interesting because it shows that now even, even um, the, the 11 other candidates think that Elizabeth Warren is the front runner um, in their, you know, at least in this early debate process. Um, but again, so yeah, again, so Warren had a lot of talk, no real answers, uh, couldn't wouldn't wouldn't answer the question on whether or not she was going to raise uh, taxes on the middle class, which and we all know, yes, she's going to raise taxes. That's what Democrats do. It's like the first order of business. They get in office, they raise taxes. Um, sorry about that. I lean forward. I got a little shimmy, shimmy, shake in my seat sometimes, and just just my butt. Anyways, um, so Bernie Bernie Sanders was back on stage last night after his um, uh, heart attack a couple weeks ago, which is shocking to me because if I had a heart attack, I would be like, you know what? Screw this, man. I'm out of here. I'm done. I don't <laughs> I don't need this that bad. I would like to live. Um, you know, in Bernie Sanders' case, I would like to live the rest of my life um, in peace and quiet without any kind of more stress. So I would have said, all right, I'm out of here. But he's still standing. And um, I thought the ironic thing was that this morning, the squad has endorsed Bernie Sanders for president. Does that come to a shock to anybody that the squad would endorse, endorse Bernie Sanders? No. Nope. They've been out of the limelight for, uh, what, I don't know, 48 hours or so? So they need to come back in and, and endorse the most progressive candidate on stage. Of course they were going to do that. Do I think they should have waited a little longer to see who was actually going to be the nominee or, or you know, closer to who was going to be the nominee? You know, lighten the load a bit on this field and, and maybe narrow it down to five or six candidates before they pick one? Sure. But, hey, I, I don't really care. So they basically just uh, took Bernie Sanders and put him down. So he's out of it because they endorsed him. And then you had... Uh, Buttigieg up there, and you know what? I had to give him props last night because he took Beto O'Rourke and basically uh, put it, put Beto's um, face right into his knee. Beto O'Rourke was up there talking his gun control bullshit and how uh, you uh, you know you, you can't be a coward and face all this and whatever. And and Buttigieg basically you know slammed him and said, "Look, I don't need you lecturing me on what courage is." I thought that was pretty good because we all know that Buttigieg is a, uh, uh, a you know, an Afghan war veteran. I think it's I think it's only Afghanistan, but anyways, 
So I thought that was I thought that was pretty good. So I gotta like him. I gotta like I gotta like Buddha Judge at least today, and then um, he's he's back out of my life again. Um, but he 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 got um, he got some points last night. Um, I think he came out swinging the most, maybe out of all of them. They're all pretty much flat, but he came out swinging the most. And then we had Joe Biden sinking ship Biden going down in flames you know I thought last night he would have come out swinging saying you know trying to really defend um, his son and his stance on their Ukrainian dealings um, but he's just basically preaching the same thing that his son's innocent and he didn't know anything about it because he doesn't talk to his sons about business or politics or whatever bullshit spewing out of this guy's mouth and um they did a, you know, one of those, uh, one of those polls that come across where they show, it's like a, a graph with, you know, three lines, Democrats, Independents, and Republicans. And when he was talking about this, it literally, it, it just stayed like this. Like nobody had a response. It was hilarious. So the, I think the Democrats gave him a C or D. I think the Democrats gave him a D. The Independents gave him a D, and the Republicans gave him an F. So I thought that was, that was pretty ironic. Then he got friggin' boring, boring Booker up there. That guy, he he just, he's like a. I think he he thinks that there's a leprechaun at the end of the rainbow with a bucket full of gold. He's just out in La La Land. I mean, he's probably riding around on his unicorn trying to find a goddamn leprechaun. Leprechaun. Yeah, I mean, if he finds him, that'd be cool. But it ain't there, buddy. It ain't there. So he's all warm and fuzzy up there on stage like he always is, and he's he's done. I don't know why he's still there. I thought he ran out of money. I thought he was gone a couple weeks ago, but he showed up. Um, freaking Kamala Harris. She is such a, she's a turd too. They're all turds. She's got no answer. So she was, her her and, um, I think it was Booker, I don't know, it was her, Booker, and Gabbard maybe. They were the ones who were really pressing hard on, on Trump's foreign policy. You know, basically saying that, he was wrong to pull out of Syria, and he's wrong to do this. And it's 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 really ironic because these freaking Democrats are like, oh my God, I can't believe he pulled out. But they're the ones saying, hey, we need to pull out of there. So, but they can't give Trump any credit at all for doing something that they want to get done anyways. It's it's so funny to watch the hypocrisy up on stage. Oh my God. He pulled out of Syria? We said he should pull out of Syria. Wait a minute, we can't like that because it's Donald Trump. So we got to backtrack on this one and, and press him, uh, you know, like we really want to stay in Syria. I, I don't understand. So she was up there spouting off all her, um, you know, foreign policy bullshit about how bad it is and slamming Trump. And when she had um, time to give an answer about what her policies would be, she had none, of course. Because she has no fucking brain in her head or a foreign policy knowledge in her body. Then you had Amy Klobuchar up there. <laughs> empty shirt. Uh, then you got that guy Strayer, Stayer, or whatever the hell he is. I don't even know who he is. He was up there. Still don't know who the guy is. I don't know why he was there. He's out. He's got to be gone. Um, Julian Castro was up there. Count Chocula, as I like to call him. He was up there. And, um, again, nothing. Andrew Yang was up there still trying to give away free money to everybody. He had, his, he had a, a pin on his shirt that said math. I'm like, why does he have a math pin on? And apparently math stands for make America, make America think harder or something like that. I'm like, this guy's really grasping at straws. He just, he needs to fucking tunnel his way back out of the stage again, out of there. And then... The, lastly, we had um, uh, Gabbard up there, and she, I think she got a taste of of the Democrats' own medicine, and she didn't like it too much. Fine when it happens to Trump, but she didn't li like it. She slammed the New York Times and CNN for coming at her and other veterans um, all the time. You know how they're, you know, CNN and New York Times, they're so anti-military. It's scary. Um, but she, they finally attacked Tulsi Gabbard. She did not like it. They called her a, Rus a Russian asset. 
I think it was CNN that called her a Russian asset the other day on uh, one of their morning programs. I'm not sure who who said it, but apparently it struck a chord and she, she didn't like it. But you know what's funny about it is that Clapper called Trump a Russian asset on CNN a couple years ago. So, gee, imagine that. Somebody else um, actually in their own party. They're, they're, they're eating their young now. Um, she didn't like it. So, you know, that that's... There was nothing. There was nothing of, of note to be said last night. There was, of course, lots of impeachment talk. He needs to go. He's the most corrupt person in the world. Bernie Sanders shaking his fist. Joe Biden up there, of course, saying, you know, he's the most corrupt president we've ever had on this planet. I'm like, uh... Really? Really? Um, but again, nothing, nothing, nothing of substance. Nothing. Um, you guys didn't miss anything, really. Uh, I hope you guys watched the, the Astros and the Yankees game instead, because far better TV than um, watching these clowns, you know, try to have a debate. They didn't even talk. They, you know, it's funny. They, this just I fell off in my head. Um, they didn't even talk about immigration last night. No immigration, no immigration, no climate change. Two of their biggest platforms, they didn't talk about either of them, which is surprising. They were too busy um, spouting off nothing. Not, absolutely nothing. So, anyways, I'm glad I could do you guys a service. And save you from having to watch that shit. Although I did, I have to admit, I did flip between the uh, Astros game, uh, Astro Yankees game, because quite frankly, I can't stand, I can't stand the New York Yankees. And ever since, so I'm, this is gonna be, this is gonna sound kind of crazy, but I'm a Red Sox fan for the American League, and I love the Dodgers in the National League. I know you're only supposed to like one team, but I can't help it. I like, I like two teams. So when the Dodgers, when the Dodgers got out of the playoffs against um, the Nationals, I pretty much tuned out. And then the Red Sox didn't even make the playoffs. So, and I, I, you know, being a Red Sox fan, you automatically hate, hate the Yankees. So you can't stand the Yankees. Anybody that plays the Yankees, I'm a fan of. So I hope the Astros beat up more on the Yankees tonight. They got two more games to win, and that should be the end of that. So, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Do me a favor. If you're not a subscriber, please do subscribe. If you are a subscriber, please make sure you're still subscribed, because there's some hocus pocus going on around here. And uh, hit the bell icon to let, uh, let yourselves know when I'm making another video. Um, I actually put a PayPal link in the description below if you want to donate to the conservative patriot and there's also a teespring link down there below if you want to get some conservative patriot gear i actually have a conservative patriot sweatshirt on right now i'm going to change this one because when i designed it it was like a lighter blue i like this blue better but it was a lighter blue and i had black writing you could really see which says the conservative up top and the patriot on the bottom of the flag you could really see it in black but I'm going to change it so it's all white. So that'll be changing. And But it's, it's, it's a really comfortable sweatshirt. I, I love this sweatshirt. Anyways, hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. And always remember to stay on the right side. Talk to you guys later. Peace. I don't know. It just kind of came over me. <laughs> See you later.